Are you ready? I certainly am. Let's make it happen. Here we go. Probably my favorite piece from the StarCraft 2 soundtrack. I have to say I don't like the StarCraft 2 soundtrack. I think the Brood War one is better. I think we've got to play some Brood War music in the next match. It's awesome. They've swapped colors, haven't they? It bloody... I hate it when they do that. Seriously, that's a tip. For any player that wants to piss me off, that's a good way to do it. Swap your colors around. Oh. Sorted. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Thermal Tick Esports White Ra. He is in the red trunks and he is playing Protoss to the east of the Shattered Temple versus his opponent, Empire Cass. He is in the blue trunks and he is playing Terran to the north. These guys just played a show match yesterday. They're just like sparring partners at the moment. But Cass is just on fire. Yes, I'm talking about it. It really, really is NBA Jam style going on here. He's heating up. He's on fire. I'm pretty sure they don't sound like that. That sounds more like Elvis. He's heating up. He's on fire. Hang on a second. That's not Elvis. It's freaking... That's James Brown. But I'm fairly sure I've been confused by the sound packs from Worms, honestly. I don't know what is what anymore. Let's check out those voice packs. I'm like, you know what? That could be anything. Especially in the later Worms games. My god, they slacked off. Uh, that's just an aside. What we've seen from Empire Cast thus far has been a veritable concrete donkey of destruction. Cast has been thrown down at this point. He smashed White Ryan in the second game. DT harassment came in, but the thing about that map, and the thing about Cast, Cast plays so much ladder, yeah? And Entombed Valley is a new map. So Cast has some of the strongest play on that map that you can possibly imagine. And the problem with that map at least that I can see, is that the natural actually has two entrances. And that means that it's very easy to outflank your opponent, especially when they go to take a third, because uh, where do you keep your army? If your army could be cut down the middle like that on that natural ramp, where do you keep it when you've taken a third base? Well, I, I couldn't answer that. And apparently White Rock couldn't either. His army was caught completely out of position. I suppose you just need exceptional map control. Pylons placed around the place, some awareness as to where your opponent actually is. But, as I said, it is a new map, and uh, the strategies have not been fully tested on it as of yet. Ooh, interesting from Cass. Straight into the factory here. He's going for the tech lab immediately. Now, the question is, why would you do that? This is not for a Reaper Fast Expand. Why? Because he's already got a factory. He's also already got two Marines. So, we're going to be going straight just for a Marauder here. Could be a 1-1-1 here from Cass, potentially. He's in close air position. That could be quite dangerous. See what he decides to do with this factory. I am intrigued. It did come straight after that, and it's fairly unusual for him to not expand. And ooh, that's some interesting play from White right here as well. He's taking his two gas, but he's only mining for one. And he goes straight for a robo. One gate, very early robo into expand. But at the moment, this is actually going to be a Marauder Hellion from Cass. It's quite dangerous. Marauder Hellion. Think about the most horrible combination you can for killing every gateway unit. Marauder Hellion is pretty much up there. But he's only going to add a single one on there. And in fact, he's actually going to float this off. The question is, is he actually going to use that as a scouting factory? Huh. It's odd to only build one Hellion, I've got to say, but for a little bit of early game aggression, maybe also to show White Ra something that is not necessarily the case, then, yeah, it can work. And also, the possibility the cast is going to place that down and start to build Hellions directly into the base of White Ra, which is exactly what's going to happen. White is going to have to respond to that immediately. Very early warp prism. Four gate warp prism here from White Rar on one base. A great map for it, simply because of the fact that he can hop right over there and his close air position is going to benefit him immensely. White Rar is aware of that as well. Single Hellion is going to make its way into the mineral line. Should be picked off by the Stalker before it can do a huge amount of damage. You just have to be careful there. The warp prism's been spotted. Oh, actually, it might not have been. Mm, nothing ready to receive there. This Warp Prism attack could be very dangerous. Fourgate Warp Prism into Empire Cast's base versus this two barracks attack with Hellion back up. Gonna be a colossal base trade between these two by the looks of it. White Rar's gonna be able to bring so many units directly into the base there. Looking for the surround, but White Rar's gonna lose a ton, a ton of probes immediately here. Not able to warp in too many units into that mineral line either, but he has denied mining from everything, and another round could come directly in there. Currently, Cast doesn't have an answer to that. 
Castle's been thrown back from the base here. White Raw holds. He loses a lot of probes in the process, but slicey, slicey time coming in here. Oh, Zealots are having a field day in the center. They finally surrounded. They weren't even crushed either. He actually only lost a single Zealot after smashing his way through over 10 SCVs. More and more warpings from White Raw. You know, when White Raw four gates, he does it in the way that only White Raw can, which is to use a warp prism directly to make that happen. More damage coming in, and Marauders don't tend to kill Zealots all that fast, especially not without Stim. Huge amounts of economic damage inflicted here. And White Raw's getting the hell out of there, and oh look, Marauders can't shoot up, so White Raw in a brilliant position at this point. In the meantime, no more Hellion damage has been done, and White Raw has stabilized economically, whereas Cast has taken a pounding. Question is, what does Cast do from here? With that Warp Prism, an ever present threat. Do you expand? Do you try and attack? You can't try and attack because the Warp Prism could come back into the base. Do you expand? Well, splitting yourself up and then getting harassed by Warp Prisms is always very unpleasant. Marines are now having to come out in order to try and shut this Warp Prism down, but White Rod brought friends. Not enough friends, admittedly. Oh, Force Field's placed down right there and creating a barrier, which actually I think has proved more effective for Cars than it has for White Rod, but it does keep the Stalker alive more to the point. And here comes another Warp in. Cars doesn't have an answer to that many Zealots. In he goes, and where he stops, nobody knows. Right into that mineral line once again. Stim is now finally completed. Cars able to kite and kite and kite. White Rod's going to need to bring in some more ranged units here, but in the meantime, doing some more economic damage to his opponent. White Rod sitting on 16 probes, dipping below 8 SCVs at this point. Can't bring the Marauders down though, Cast is able to hold for the moment, he's still got 3 barracks, bear that in mind. It's getting shut down really well here by Cast, but his forces will start to peter out eventually, because he simply doesn't have the money to support 3 barracks. War Prism takes some fire, but it's getting the hell out of there. No problems at all. And once again, great harassment here by White Ra. The question is, what does White Ra do from this point? Well. He could go DT. DT is a great option. One base DT would be perfect. Why? Because his opponent's stuck on one base and has economic problems, which means he's going to be spending a lot of energy in two mules. He also has no engineering bay. DT will be a fairly long piece of tech, but yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he went for that at all. White Rod dodging and weaving, dipping and ducking. He needs to get out of there, though. He's not going to be able to drop into this mineral line anymore. The mule comes in and Cast starting to stabilize his economy. Hmm, now Cast has spotted the Twilight Council. It is going to be a DT Shrine as well, and Cast is actually going to see that. Unless White Rod is able to stop him from getting in there, because he's doing an unusual path here, and another warp in here by White Rod. Some damage done, limited, but I think he knows that even if he's trading inefficiently here, he's in a better position, but he doesn't want to lose that warp prism. Oh, White Rod, you sneaky, sneaky devil. Look at that. In the meantime, Cast is getting a little bit offensive here. White Raw will be able to block this off without too much of a problem for a while, however. He's got the sentries for it. There's the blockade, and this should give him a little bit of time in order to build his forces up. But that DT Shrine is going to be spotted. Engineering Bay coming down as soon as it was spotted there by Cast. These T's are still going to be extremely effective, however, in the defense. That's something to consider. With only one base, he can't afford to just keep scanning. That was a pickup there from the warp prison that you can hear in the background. Looking for once again for another warp in into the base. And this is undefended. A four zealot warp in is going to do huge damage here. There's enough sentry energy to keep these units out for some time. Oh, we just want to lose. Oh, that one was full. That one had energy. That was crucial. White Rod just may have made the mistake that cost him the match. I guess we're about to find out very shortly. Another warp in comes in. Shut down there by Carson. That force got in, and that shouldn't have happened. It really, really shouldn't. DTs are now being warped in, but is there any scan energy? There isn't. So DTs are going to do huge damage here. One got into the base, and another one is now in the defense. So what could have potentially lost in the game? It looks like White Rod's going to be able to save himself from this. Blockades that area off with a pile on. Slice and dice and GG, ladies and gentlemen. White Rod takes the game and is now right back into the series. 2-1. Impressive. Most impressive. Oh, he was so close to losing that game. Losing that one sentry could have shut him the hell down, but no. No, it did not. White Ra, the mighty defense, and the four gate, one base, walk prism, DT. Because, hey, why not? We'll be right back with game four very shortly in this fantastic series.